Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ajayta Shah, and I'm the founder and CEO of Frontier Markets. I apologize uh, for my voice. I've been pitching for the last three days at the Global Enterprise Summit, but it was good because I won. So we represented India and clean tech and women globally, so that was pretty amazing. Um, so I wanted to share kind of um, a little bit of the pitch that I use there and then talk about what is it that we need to do now and how the concept of shared value for me has been a brilliant way to really look at partnerships um, that can effectively allow you to think about resource optimization, um, better scale potential, value for money, and actually what it takes to do that. Um, so that's my plan. Um, over the last decade, I've personally lived in 5,000 villages. I've worked in 5,000 villages in India, witnessing rural households suffer from darkness, fear, and instability. While clean energy solutions can address this, the reality is in India, especially rural India, penetration is less than five to 7%. So what do we do to address this? How do we get more reliable, relevant, durable solutions to the last mile faster? To address this, Frontier Markets has built a model for scale through technology and partnerships with women in the center of the value chain. We partner with NGOs to recruit rural women who have zero income today and make them become micro franchisees and support them with technical training, uh, market activation, technology, and give them access to innovative product solutions that they're then being able to sell to rural households. We've built a network of 1,000 women entrepreneurs selling clean energy solutions like solar home systems, um, solar appliances, um, selling clean cook stoves, and they've sold it to 400,000 people in Rajasthan, impacting 2.1 million people. And they've earned a total of $2.5 million in revenue and helped create $9.2 million of savings. And we continue to work with them and support them by thinking outside of the box on a regular basis. The difference, though, is that we co-create with them. Ultimately, if you want to solve a problem for someone, you better make sure that person is involved in the solution. And that last mile household, when you really work with them, innovation happens in a very different way. You can launch a 22 watt solar TV with built-in free cable and HD and HDMI access for under 12,000 rupees. You can create a solar blender for dairy farmers and understand the value proposition of when they need it to make chash to sell to, who's, to which household at what time. You're able to think about solar induction stoves instead of biomass stoves because women want all kinds of cooking solutions for their households. And you do this because you let women be the center of that value chain by using technology. So they're using mobile phones, they're using devices to actually continue engaging these households to help you understand what is that next innovation and how do we understand its value and what will be that scale potential. But the point of partnership here is also very important. What we do is we then work with local Indian manufacturers who we know are very good at manufacturing. They're just not involved in the understanding of what that solution should be. And when they start creating those products and you start looking at the value of scale, you're able to really drive down costs and you're able to impact more lives more effectively. So we should all be celebrating our victories, right? We're 55 people, we have half of us are women, you know, we have hundreds of years of experience in rural distribution, data analytics, engineering, marketing, et cetera. So obviously the question would then be that if we broke even last year, which we did, with 46% gross profit margins on product sales, what's next? Scale, obviously. Go deeper. The question that everyone constantly asks me, Ajit, like you're just in Rajasthan? You know, what about the rest of India? Ajit, are you only gonna do this in India? Are you looking at other countries? And I'm always constantly looking at these people and saying, there's 1.2 million households just in Rajasthan and I've only covered 400,000, right? There's 270 million people in India and I've only covered 2.1 million. So let's first understand what we're talking about in terms of focus and scale. But to do this scale, it requires partnerships in a very different way. We had to do a very critical lens and look at what, as Ashish mentioned, we're good at and what we're not so good at. What have been our challenges and why have they been our challenges? And we're gonna get serious to scale to six states, create 10,000 women entrepreneurs, generate a revenue of $26 million by 2022. 
We need to then make sure that we're partnering with the right people. So we did this at Frontier Markets and we said, you know, are we, are we really good at training women? Are we actually very good at identifying the next women entrepreneur? Where is it that we're lacking our ability to enter into new markets? And what do we need to do to go deeper? If we're gonna be training these women and we want them to earn a lakh rupees a year, what do we need to do in terms of skills? And how are we thinking about this, not for this year, but for five years? And also, if we're thinking about product innovation, are we equipping people correctly? And that is where the lovely Megan Fallone came into my life, uh, Barefoot College. And um, we sat down and we had an honest discussion about our challenges. So Barefoot College, as I'm sure many of you know, Bunker Roy, 40 years, Solar Mamas, you know, trains women in solar engineering. They're scaled into 92 countries, but they're in trouble. You know, their trouble is that they're running like a nonprofit and they're constantly raising money for the next project. They're in trouble because after scaling to 92 countries, there's a lot of questions about whether their women are fundamentally earning money. Are they lasting? And so their trouble is my opportunity because my trouble is their opportunity. They're phenomenal at training. They're phenomenal at FinTech training, at digital training, at social training, at motivation, at engineering training. I'm not so good at that and I can be honest about it. But I also know they have a phenomenal presence. They're in 10 states of India. So we came together to say, how do we share value? So we first aligned our missions and said, look, we fundamentally want to empower the rural household and do that through empowered, economically empowered rural women. Great, check mark. We also believe that clean energy is an important answer to productivity and the challenge of the electricity crisis is a real one. Check mark. We also believe that we should scale quickly now because we've both been working for many, many years and really aren't achieving the kind of deep level scale, both with financial impact and social impact the way that we wanted to. Check mark. And then the big question was, how? How do you do that? Like it's not enough for two founders or two CEOs to come together and say, yes, I wanna work with you. How do you do it really? It takes an intense level of trust. It takes an intense level of transparency. It takes an intense level of critical thinking and honesty of your own self. Be as insecure as you possibly can be so that you can actually show your vulnerabilities to achieve a partnership. So we literally listed this entire value chain down. What does it take to empower that one rural household through one economically empowered rural women? And when we went through that entire laundry list, we realized we were crazy trying to do this everything by ourselves. Crazy. Not using our resources effectively, not training, not necessarily being able to recruit people properly, and frankly, stretching ourselves so thin that we were really getting tired. I'm 33 years old and I have a lot of gray hairs for a reason, right? So now, when we came together and we started separating the values, we were able to understand a very different way of co-sharing resources. Suddenly, her team that's brilliant as training is now my team. My team that's damn good at marketing is her team. We're mapping our planning of our six state scale together. We're actually understanding what the economic requirement is to make that happen. So there's no longer two financial models. There's one financial model, which integrates every single element of what we need. And we also understand what we're both good at. We're good at how do we bring in the right kind of financial model with the right kind of capital for the right kind of work and track it. They're damn good at technology, monitoring and evaluation and training. We are very good at product innovation, marketing, and really understanding how to get women to earn money. And this combination is lethal. And so when we announced this partnership, the other major thing that we got was either joyous celebrations or skeptics. And the skeptics were like, there's no way an NGO and a social enterprise can partner together. Like, are you mad? You guys have very different philosophies. Incorrect. Actually, we have very aligned philosophies. We both care about the poor. We both fundamentally believe they need to be empowered. We've just been doing it by ourselves in a different way, and we're recognizing that we need to do it better together. The second thing that we also dealt with was people saying, well, are you really gonna be able to utilize your resources effectively? You know, 
Barefoot has a lot of attributes of strengths and a history and an experience, and so does Frontier Markets. But Megan Falone and Ajayta Shah are also powerhouses now. And coming together, when we go and do a pitch, we blow people's minds for that reason. And I think the key to shared impact value and partnership to scale is about that. So when we go from 1,000 women entrepreneurs to 10,000 women entrepreneurs, potentially 100,000 women entrepreneurs, we do it with a process, a system, a vision, and an understanding that's aligned through cohesive partnership. Uh, that's it, and I have six seconds left to spare. So thank you.